Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. We are so happy you are sharing this time with us today. We have jam-packed our video full of money-saving hints, tips, and ideas to give you a full, abundant life, yet spend less money. Today, we're going to get outside, and Paul is going to show you our container garden how we put it together, what he used, the compost, really wonderful information. We're also going to share a DIY with you. We're also going to share some personal, I have too much of this item and I need to learn how to declutter a little more efficiently and effectively. And I'm gonna keep it real and show you exactly what I'm talking about. We're gonna do some crock pot cooking and then we're going to show you our best yet purchase from the Too Good To Go food app. And no, this is not a sponsored video. So sit back, relax. The first thing we're going to do is Paul's gonna take us outside and we're gonna do a little gardening. So what I'm doing now is mixing up my compost and getting it ready to take it out and put it into our containers for growing this season. This stuff is just beautiful soil. We mix everything in there like eggshells, coffee and tea grounds, vegetables. You can see it. Everything is in there and this soil is ready to go. Now I'm going to take the compost and put it into a more manageable bucket and then bring that over to my work area, I'm going to put it into a cement mixing trough that I have, and I'm gonna pick out any roots or unbroken down vegetables and just return that back to the compost container, and I'll have my soil prepared for planting. Here are some of our buckets that we've collected. They're food safe. We got these for free from the grocery store just by asking the manager if they had anything like this and they said yes they were throwing them out can you believe it so we were able to bring these home and what I'm doing now is drilling out the bottom for drainage very important so repurposing these keeps them out of the landfill in this bucket here I've collected some stones and rocks one thing about living in the Northeast we have plenty of stones and rocks if you don't have anything like this, you can use some sticks and twigs to coat the bottom of the bucket and also use some leaves just to keep the dirt from filtering through the holes in the bottom of the container. Now I mixed in some soil that I collected from my leaf mulch pile, which is down at the end of my property, just to add some dirt to the compost. And I just broke it up in this container and now I'm filling my pots to get ready for planting. If I find any pieces of unbroken down vegetables, I'm just simply putting that in another bucket, which you can't see right now, and adding that back to my compost container for further breakdown. Now the container is ready for planting. Here's my tomato plant going in. I just gently make a hole in the center of the pot, press the dirt around it, and there it is. Our little baby's ready to grow. Here is our beautiful finished container garden. We have several varieties of peppers, several varieties of tomatoes, basil, celery. We have bean seeds that we have planted in these containers. Such a simple but effective way to grow your own food. On that lower field below our figs, we have pumpkins, raspberries, and horseradish growing. And here's Loris just passing through. We are so excited that we will be growing some of our food this summer. We cannot encourage you more to try this out. It does not have to be on a big scale. Just do maybe a couple of tomatoes and a plant of basil even. Any little bit will help. It tastes so delicious and you grew it yourself. It is economical as well. 
Just purchase a couple of plants that you may want to grow, a bag of potting soil, some food safe containers, and you are good to go. We can't tell you how beneficial it is. Just the feeling you get from growing some of your own food. Just a wonderful hobby to cultivate and it's delicious too. So we hope that was encouraging. Now, I want to show you how Paul came up with a really clever idea. My work area where I do my YouTube videos, edit and all that is also the area I pay bills and I do our bookkeeping and it was crowded. My computer screen took so much room up and well, you'll see, I'm going to turn the camera around and Paul is going to show you what he did instead of me going out and buying a whole new desk, which I was going to do, he came up with this solution. So I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to show you how he saved us a ton of money. Here you go. This is my work area. I edit my videos. I do everything right here. Now, unfortunately, I also pay my bills here and do bookkeeping here and I literally have no room. So I was talking to Paul and I said, I really need an L-shaped deck coming out here and then over so that I can do whatever I need to do. And there's Dixie. And he said, the problem is you're losing about a foot of space because of this area right here. If I was able to push the computer screen back, I would have so much more room. So to save ourselves some money and see if we can DIY this, Paul's going to try to take this off. And this is not a lot of important stuff. It's just papers, which I can put in bins or baskets and it'll be fine. So we're going to attempt this and see if we can make this a little bit friendlier for me to get all my work done on. So there's screws underneath this table that'll remove the top part. So I'm just going to remove the screws and see if we can make this desk a little bit bigger. This is going to be so great. We get to get rid of this whole backsplash and that will give me so much room. My husband is so creative. Okay, so we have got 14 screws and two wooden pegs out. Now I'm going to reset up the desk and see if this worked. I think it's going to give me a lot more room as I can tell already, but we're going to see. And it also gives me a wonderful way to declutter what was in those drawers. Oh my goodness, what a difference. Look at the room I have now. I found a little table that I'm using next to me that I have some baskets and I put important paperwork in there. Everything is set up perfectly. Look at all this space I have now to write my checks and to do what I need to do. I still have the draw there. Absolutely perfect. We're gonna see if there's anything we can do with this, the top part. Maybe mount it somewhere because it's a great shelf, but we're thinking about it but this really solved my problem big time. A little DIY and some creativity by my husband just worked out so well. How perfect was that? I was looking on Facebook Marketplace for a new desk, Amazon, I'm like, I need more room. He's like, just take the backdrop off. I was like, oh, really, we can do that? And as you saw, he did it. It is so much roomier now. I paid bills yesterday and I was telling him, I just pushed the monitor back and almost had the whole desk to myself. It was a really clever solution and it saved us a ton of money. Now, I'm not sure what we're gonna do with that top part, but we'll keep you posted. We encourage you to try DIYs that are within your realm and that are safe always because you don't wanna start a DIY project that is dangerous or maybe you may not have full knowledge of, always keep that in mind. Now, we're gonna head upstairs and I'm gonna come clean with you yet again because I hope this encourages you. We try to keep it real on this channel. We are not putting up smoke and mirrors, we're showing you real life. And these are some items I struggle with when it comes to buying extra. We're gonna show you what it is 
And I'm also going to show you a great way to get inside your clothes closet and possibly scale it down and make your wardrobe a little bit more efficient and practical. It's a fun tip. So let's turn the camera around and let's get upstairs. Perfect example of what I am talking about. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rolls, not counting. <laughs> more that are started in the other room. I see this adorable wrapping paper after Christmas and I'm like, oh, I just need one more. Are you kidding me? Look at how much I have. Now the problem is we don't even give that many <laughs> gifts anymore. So I have a plethora of wrapping paper and I need to say that's enough. No matter how cute it is or how much I think it will look adorable wrapped around a present, there has to be a point where enough is enough. When I get down to maybe two or three rolls, then we'll rethink it. But for right now, this is going to last us quite a while. The other item greeting cards. I see the packages that are super cute, embellished, very inexpensive. A dollar for 10 cards, I buy them. We don't even know this many people. <laughs> I mean, I could send everyone I know a card for the next 10 years and we probably wouldn't empty this box. Again, you see something, it's appealing, it's adorable. Oh my goodness, look at this, they're so cute. I know someone would enjoy getting it. And the thought is wonderful. But I need to say to myself, I have enough for right now. When the box gets lower and I've used up what I have, then we'll think about it. Here we are in our closet. I wanna give you a really great tip to streamline your wardrobe Make sure you're not overbuying and you are blessing others with the things you no longer want or use. It's the beginning of summer, so right here are pretty much all my summer tops. What I'm going to do is after I wear a top that I like, it fits me well, it's cute, I am going to turn the hanger around and I am gonna put that hanger in facing the other way. And then I know that I have worn this top. After I wear it, I wash it, it goes right back to this hanger, and I know this is something I use. At the end of the season, around the beginning of October, mid-September, I am gonna see how many of these hangers are facing the way I put them in. If they are still facing towards the wall, and that means I have not worn that particular item in several months, and obviously I'm not gonna be wearing it over the winter, so maybe it's time I rethink it and give it away. This is a simple hanger trick, tip, and it works. Just turn that hanger around when you wear something. This way, at the end, if this shirt is still facing this way, then I know I have not worn it and it needs to be donated and to bless someone else so they can use it. So there you go. I have a little too much Christmas wrapping paper and a lot of greeting cards. So that is on my list today to actually go through the greeting cards and make a pack that I can donate or give away and just make it a little bit more efficient to go through for me. Also, what about that hanger tip? I cannot stress that enough. At the end of the season, check it out. Are there blouses or pants or skirts that you haven't worn in three, four months? It might be time to allow someone else to enjoy them, right? Now, I wanna get in the kitchen with you. The weather is warming up and we are turning to our crock pot more and more. I know a lot of people think of like hearty soups and stews for crock pot cooking, and that is true, but it's also great for just like simple meals to keep the kitchen cool and a little different than grilling out every night. So let's turn this camera around, get into the kitchen and make a yummy crock pot chicken dish. This is a wonderful crock pot meal. It has got these delicious flavors and it will be 
perfect to keep your kitchen cool, but still give you a really delicious meal. So in the crock pot, I have two pounds of chicken breast. It was actually one huge <laughs> breast that Paul cut in two. You can also use boneless chicken thighs. Now we're going to create a yummy sauce that we're going to pour over. Right here I have two tablespoons of soy sauce. You can use anywhere from two, four, even six if you really want it to be robust. Soy sauce is extremely salty, so just a personal preference, we're only going to use two tablespoons. I've got two cloves of garlic here, which I am going to crush, and that's going to go into our sauce. I have got one crushed ginger cube. Let me show you what this is. This was a Saturday sampler from Acme. It was for free. And there's 16 ginger cubes that you keep in the freezer, and each one equals a teaspoon of ginger. So you're going to need one teaspoon of fresh ginger. Then you're going to need four tablespoons of honey and four tablespoons of ketchup. And for a little bit of a kick, we're going to add some red chili pepper. That's all there is to it. So let's mix up our sauce. So we're going to add our soy sauce, a little bit of some crushed red pepper to taste, because that's a hot one. We're going to use one, two tablespoons of honey. Now, instead of adding two more tablespoons of honey, I'm going to mix this up. And I am going to use two tablespoons of pure maple syrup. I know I'm being unconventional, but I think this is going to be great. So you've got two tablespoons of honey, and you've got two tablespoons of pure maple syrup. And then we're going to put in about four tablespoons of ketchup. And I'm going to eyeball this. One, two, three, four. There you go and two cloves of crushed garlic. Now I'm just gonna give this a good mix. Just make sure you whisk it. At first it was really thick and now I can feel it loosening up as I whisked it. Got that honey broken down a little bit. Okay, now we're just gonna pour this over our chicken breast. Every last bit, make sure you get everything. Don't waste food. Now I'm just gonna take it, make sure it's all covered. Now we're going to cover this, and I'm gonna put it on high. And because I'm using chicken breasts, I'm gonna check it in about three hours. Long as the chicken's internal temperature is 165 degrees. So I just put it on high, and we'll check back in a couple of hours. This has been cooking just about three hours on high. Look at all the sauce it made. We are just gonna carefully, because it is super hot, shred it right in the pot. You can take it out and shred it if you feel more comfortable doing that. So it's all shredded. Mix that delicious sauce throughout. And now I defrosted a bag of stir-fry veggies, and we're just gonna Add that as well and let it heat through. And we have got a complete meal here over rice. So I'm just gonna cover it. I don't know, give it another 15 minutes or so to heat through. So I put a scoop of rice on the bottom of the bowl. Oh my goodness, this smells so good. These one pot meals in the summertime are just fantastic. Now, if I had some fresh scallions, I would put them on top. Maybe some peanuts. You could even do extra soy sauce, teriyaki sauce. What a delicious one bowl meal. Simple, frugal, and it won't heat up your kitchen. That was such a simple, yummy meal with items we had in the home already. And that's how we wanna cook, zero food waste use up what we have, be creative, substitute items if you can. The only tip I would give you for that meal, I would have doubled the sauce, definitely doubled the sauce. It was delicious as it was, but I think if it had a little bit more sauce, it would have been over the top. 
So give that one a try. It is a perfect warm weather meal. Now we're going to share another two good to go app purchase with you. This one blew all the other ones away. Wait till you see it. I will link the original video where we talked about the Too Good To Go app, which is basically an app that restaurants and stores use, bakeries. At the end of the day, they sell you their leftover food at actually about 75% off. And we have been using this about once a week. We set our limit to $5 and it's kind of like a treat for us. But this one turned out way above and beyond. You've got to see this. Let's turn the camera around and see what they gave us this time. Well, here it is. Another Too Good To Go box from another pizzeria. This one's on the other side of town. We haven't tried this, so here it is. The unveiling. Ooh, dun, 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 dun. Let's see what's in this one. This was $4.99. Oh my gosh, Paul. What the heck? Oh, oh no way. Oh my gosh! That looks like chicken and I don't know bacon. how many pieces are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I, I don't even oh know. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. All right, we're gonna lay it out so we can see what's here. We were impressed with those four slices from the other pizzeria. There are nine slices of pizza here for $4.99. How big is that one, Paul? 10 inches from oh. the point. How about this way? 10 by 10. Oh my <laughs> goodness, look at this. That what looks is like that? chicken. No, I don't think that's maybe. Yeah, it looks that, like that's bacon chicken. or something, I don't know. Okay. That's sausage. We got sausage, we're not sure what this is. This. That's buffalo chicken, buffalo it looks chicken, like. Buffalo chicken, another buffalo chicken. Oh my goodness, what, oh that's like a, um, that's the baked ziti pasta. What is this with the white? It's a chicken. It's chicken with bacon. I wonder if it's bacon ranch chicken, because that's ranch sauce. Oh my goodness, okay. We are taking these and we are freezing them. It was $4.99 for nine gourmet slices. Needless to say, we were impressed with the other place, but this blows it away. This is, this is five stars and beyond. How fun is this app? And look at the food that did not get wasted. And we're going to be sharing this. My brother's coming into town. Our son always stops by. What a great deal for $4.99. We were so blown away. I'm going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Well, it turns out the one that we thought might have been chicken, and maybe it wasn't chicken, was actually pineapple and ham, which is like my son's favorite. And so he was really blessed with that one. But what an amazing deal. If you use this app and you're not satisfied with what you get, at the end, they ask you to rate it. Was it a five star, four star, three star? It has been consistently five stars with us here in this area. But that last one, oh my goodness, I'm telling you, we have pizza in the freezer for weeks. So it was such a great way to save money. And no, this is not a sponsored video. It's just something we wanna share with you to help you save some money. Now, I am sure you are all wondering about Beatrice. Beatrice the baker, the sourdough starter. Beatrice did not make it. We are on Beatrice number two. And anyone who tells you, oh, sourdough starter is the easiest thing to make, well, bless them because we are struggling with this. And you know we keep it real here. You know we do. I would never pretend that something is working if it's not. I just wouldn't do that to you. So, yeah, we have tried so many different methods. You all have emailed us and DM'd us. Don't use metal to mix it. Um, feed it more, add more water, make sure you use a clean container. There are so many variables and we are not able to get this down right yet. We will work on it, but I'll tell you what, I probably will never show you how to make a starter from beginning to end. It is really such a touchy item. Um, we're really struggling with it, right, Paul? I mean, 
It's like a chemistry project. Oh my goodness. And those of you who said, oh, no problem. You just mix a little, oh, bless you, bless you. I am so jealous, but it is a good thing. When we do finally get it, because I will not give up, um, we will use the starter to show you a bread recipe. But as far as coming to me for a starter recipe, yikes, I am not having luck with this. So just keeping it real and keeping it honest. We always want to keep it real with you all. Today's question of the day. What do you have going on this summer? Are you starting a garden? Are you working on a particular project? Do you want to get some deep cleaning done? What are you all doing to save money, live a slower life, simplify your life, and enjoy every minute? Share with us down below in the comments section. What is it that's going to make your summer super special to you? For us, we want to continue our garden. We have to get our firewood in. Yeah, probably about four cords, we're thinking. We want to declutter more. Just a bunch of ongoing basic projects. And we're curious what you all have in store for the summer. Any travel plans? Share with us down below. It will not only encourage us, it will encourage our viewers as well. We thank you so much for sharing this time with us. You all make our week. We look forward to these Friday videos so much. And don't forget, every Tuesday, a short will come out from us. This past Tuesday, we shared the most delicious watermelon, feta, and cucumber salad. Oh my goodness. So if you haven't checked last Tuesday's short video out, go take a peek at that as well. We are so close to 50,000 subscribers. So if you're watching this and you have not subscribed yet, click that subscribe button and come on in and be part of our frugal family. We would love to have you. We ask that you please give this a big thumbs up. It helps us so much. It really does. We appreciate you. We ask you to be well, we ask you to be safe, and above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God richly bless you.